Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jupiter James, where I do what I want, when I want, and today we're gonna get into some um, astrology. More specifically, my in-depth rising sign series. Um, the rising sign is the most important sign and aspect within the chart and just as a human being. I feel that as a predictive astrologer, you know, the most important thing is your rising sign because it shows me who you are, it shows me your values, it shows me how you make your money, it shows me who your mom was, it shows me the marriage partner you're gonna attract or the type of romantic partners you're gonna be involved with. It's gonna show me the type of careers and the type of vocation you will find yourself in. So if that sounds good to you, let's get into it. So today we are going to get into the very free, travel loving, education, learning loving, sign of Sagittarius. Sagittarius risings are known to be the tomb raiders of the zodiac as I like to call it. You know, they are the excavators of culture. They are the people who are always on a plane, always on a train, always on a boat, always on a float, always going somewhere and always going anywhere than where they are right now. And that is because they just want to explore the world. They want to see what life has to offer for them. You know, they are ruled by the abundant planet of Jupiter. And when you have Jupiter ruling your sign, this is gonna make you um, someone who you want to preach and teach. You know, you want to learn and you want to find out the secrets and the deeper wisdoms of the world. And you also, once you find those things, want to communicate those things to others. You know, I, there was this one woman who is a fitness instructor and she was always so proud about her certifications and the travels that she went on and she was such a potent Sagittarius. I wish I could say her name but I can't but she was always on Instagram being like oh my god my certification for NASA, my certification for this, my certification for that and she'd always be telling you the new things she learned about the clavicle and this and that and then she, from there she'd be on a plane going to Bali and holding fitness retreats and all these things around the world and like that is potent Sagittarius energy. It's where the person is on the move. It's the, the symbol of the arrow. You know, what is an arrow? An arrow is in the sky. It's raw power. It's on to the next, you know? So with Sagittarius in the first house, you are gonna be probably someone who has a very athletic body. You know, this the symbol of Sagittarius is also the centaur, right? So centaurs are known to be very strong and athletic, and so you are gonna be like that as well. You're gonna be someone who is very, very athletic. You probably have a strong stature about you, and you are someone who values truth as well. You are always gonna show up and try to be as, as truthful as possible. Even when it hurts people, or, or it rubs people the wrong way, you say what's what, because you would rather, you would rather hurt someone's feelings and the truth be known than for the lie to hurt someone's feelings. You know, the truth for you is where it's at. It's like, it's the truth or nothing. The truth or bust for you. So, you as a Sagittarius in the first, you're gonna be that. You're also gonna be, if not strong, you're gonna be big because Jupiter is in your first house. So it's gonna make you a, either a big personality, like you're gonna be sometimes too much for people or like too, you're gonna be too brash, too in your face. You are a fire, potent energy. And like you are, you are like, you are master fire. Sagittarius is master fire. You have mastered the fire element. And you know, some people can't take that. You know, it's like, if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. And so with that Jupiterian fiery energy, you're gonna come off very strong to people, whether that be in your presence, in your aura, in your energy, in the way you talk and what you communicate, you're just gonna be that. And so if people can't handle it, oh well, you know. Now with Capricorn in your seventh house, this uh, in your second house, this is gonna mean that for you, you are going to be someone that values success. You value um, very traditional things in life. You are someone who values like tradition. You are someone who's like, I'm gonna do this by the book. I'm gonna follow traditions. I'm gonna, you, you like very, I don't wanna say cookie cutter, but you value traditions. Traditions are something that you hold true and you don't, you try not to veer away from tradition too much. Um, with Aquarius in the third house, you are going to be someone who in your mind, you are very, 
your mind is on different things. Your mind is on the collective. Your mind is on the world. Your mind is at on humanity at large. Again, it speaks back to the story of you being a Sagittarius rising or Sagittarius in the first house because with Sagittarius in the first house, you are going to be always on to the next, right? And when you got Aquarius in the third house, you are going to be detached, right? And so when someone's attached in their mind and in their communication, that means what? That they're they're always with they're always on to the next. And so you're just you're in your mind it's in your mind it's very hard to pinpoint how you feel sometimes and what you are you you do show a very individualistic in the way that you think. You are very progressive in the way that you think. You're very a far out thinker. You are a progressive thinker. And as a Sagittarius, Sagittarius rising, you would have to be, right? So with fourth house in with fourth house in Pisces, you are gonna be someone who probably grew up in a very um, creative household or your mother was very creative. Um, your mother or the household that you grew up in was probably very big and, and, and creative and so was your, your mother. And yeah, I, I'm gonna go with that. Now with fifth house in Aries, wait, so with fourth house in Pisces, you probably also had a very spiritual mother as well. You probably had a mom who was either very abstract or not there or not present or those, you know, things like that. Like you would probably had a gumbo soup of all the things I just named, like a creative household, a big household, a mom who was very creative, a mom who was probably very absent minded or just not present or in and out. Um, yeah, a, a gumbo soup of that within your childhood. In, in your present day, you also probably try to have a home that is very creative for you or a very like, um, it's an escape for you. Your home is an escape for you. With fifth house in Aries, you are going to be someone who, you know, when you see someone and you like someone, you are, you say it, you know, it's like, and if it's not quick, if people aren't direct with you, like, hey, hey you, hey Sagittarius, before you get on that plane, I just want to let you know that I love you and I like you and I want to marry you. If it's not like that, you are on to the next. You have in this, with fifth house Aries, you are very direct and you want people to be direct with you. And if they're not, your mind is like, all right, gotta go. Cause I'm trying to get on that plane anyway. I gotta, I gotta go, you know? Um, now with sixth house in Taurus, sixth house in Taurus is gonna mean that for you, you always show up in very luxurious spaces and very stable places as far as your career. You're probably in a career that requires beauty or aesthetics or banking or money, but in your day to day, I want to say that you find yourself in very stable environments and environments that are probably very luxurious. With seventh house in Gemini, seventh house in Gemini is going to be you're going to be someone who, again, it's going to require you as a Sagittarius rising who loves to express yourself, who loves to talk about the world, who is a person of the world and has traveled everywhere. You're going to need someone who is able to communicate, communicate, communicate. Communication and words of service and words of affirmation are your love language. If you are not coupled with someone who is a very social creature or someone who at at least is communicative with you you're out boom see ya and in your career your career is also going to require you to be someone who's very social and to communicate you're going to be someone that needs to be communicating and very social like networking is very important for you in your career and how you lock down your business contracts now with eighth house in cancer, eighth house in cancer is gonna mean that in the bedroom, you are gonna be someone who supports, you know, you're gonna be a very emotional person. You're probably, it's so ironic that you as a Sagittarius, who's always whizzing around and can be pinned down, that when it does come down to it and it comes down to you having that conjugal bond with someone in the bedroom, you are gonna need a certain level of healing and tenderness and support and emotional support in order to really, really bond with someone. Um, now with your eighth, 
with your ninth house in Leo, ninth house in Leo is gonna mean that for you, you know, again, you shine the most when you are traveling. When you are traveling, you've just got this glow about you. When you are traveling, you have got all eyes on you. It is like you are feeling yourself. You've got the outfits ready. You've got the, you, it's just, because that speaks back to the story of a Sagittarius rising. Whenever you are away from home, whenever you are traveling, whenever you are on that plane, not only do you feel at home and you feel the most sunshine in your heart and in your soul, it's just that you you, you glow, you glow. You, your sun is highlighting this area. So you probably have very fun trips, very creative trips, very just like, this is why you love traveling because when you travel, life is just, a breeze life is just fun life is easy like and you probably learn a lot here you learn a lot when you travel you you express yourself you know that would make sense too because with Leo in the ninth house Leo isn't shy so in the ninth house this is all about your learning and your your higher philosophies of the world and so as a Sagittarius rising, it would make sense that Leo would be in this house because for you, when you travel, you're not shy and you love, love, love to communicate with the locals. You are the type of person that probably doesn't even want to go where the tourists are going. You want to dive and go into, you know, the villages, where the villagers are, where the locals are and, and talk to them and eat what they eat and do what they do. Like, and you're not shy about it. And from there, you probably get a lot of recognition. Of how, uh, people are like, oh my God, who is this? person from this other uh, plane like just chilling with us like they are from here you know now with your 11th house in Libra well sorry your 10th house in Virgo is going to be you're gonna be someone who in your 10th house it's gonna require you to be very detail-oriented your job is probably very painstaking for you and it requires a lot of service like it requires a lot, a lot, a lot of, it, re, it just requires you to be very detail oriented and it probably sucks some days and you're probably just like, oh my God, when is this gonna end? But Mercury is ruling this sign. It's gonna take a toll on your mind because, because you have to be detail oriented in your job. And whatever you do for your job, it's just, it, it, it takes up a lot of your mental capacity because, and it, and it requires you to use your mental capacity to serve and to help and to fix and to organize and to calculate, you know? It, like Virgo is the energy of taking whatever is messed up and organizing it. And so that will have that theme in your job. With your 12th house, with your 11th house in Libra, Venus is ruling this house, and so you're gonna have a lot of friends. You're gonna love, love, love your friends. Your friends are probably gonna be very beautiful or, you know, give you grace. They're gonna extend grace to you. You know, they're, they're gonna be okay with the fact that you're very flighty or, you know, always on a plane or a train and you miss that appointment or you are not around too often. They're gonna be okay with that. And like, you're gonna have friends that, you're gonna have a large network of people too because Libra is, the um, networking sign, you know? So you're gonna have a lot of networks and you're gonna have people who just love you. You know, you're gonna have a lot of friends. Um, now, you could also fall into territories of being a people pleaser with your friends or the organizations that you find yourself in as well. So be careful with that. Be careful as to not be a people pleaser within your career as well. Now, um, with 12th house in Scorpio, again, you are a very spiritual person. You probably find the most spirit when you are away in foreign lands. When you are away in foreign lands, you are able to see into the depths of everything. You are able to use your knowledge and your Sagittarian nature to see into the depths of things. And you are, you can see almost God in, in, in foreign lands. And that's how you are able to be transformed whenever you come back from a foreign land you are transformed by that your psyche is transformed by that you are renewed by that you are reborn by that and so yeah you probably are also someone who when you travel um it's very transformative and you're always on the go mars is ruling this 12th house of travel and foreign lands and 
far off places and Mars is here and Pluto is here. So not only do you have a lot of power and transformation and control in foreign lands, but you are probably also always on the go. And through that and by that, you are able to see into the depths of things, find the secrets of the world. And through that, you are able to find God in your higher philosophy. So that was my Sagittarius through the houses rising sign in-depth analysis video. If you would like a in-depth reading, because again, listen, this was just a general makeup of the chart, right? Everything changes once you plop your unique planets in these houses. And so if you would like to know what your unique planetary placements are doing within each house, hit my link, email me. I'm ready for you. Yeah, I know the stars have got a sign and a solution for you and I would love to relay the message. And I will see y'all on the next video, all right? Y'all have a good one out there, Sagittarius Risings. Bye.